Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Who is there? Who is joining us today? Hello, hello, hello. Let me play my music. Who is joining us today? <clears throat> this is Topsy Gift here in Ivano Frankis, Ukraine. And uh, we'll be talking about from where we, we stopped yesterday, uh, no, a day before yesterday, right? <clears throat> the dangers of um, bright price. So, <laughs> one minute, let me plug my laptop. <sighs> oh yeah, we're good to go now. So, who is joining us today? Hello, hello, hello. This is Topsy Gift here in Ivano Frankivs, Ukraine. And um, we started a topic a few days ago titled Why I Think Bright Price Should Be Abolished. And um, yes, the day before yesterday, we talked about the dangers. We talked on the dangers of bright price the dangers of bright price so please as you come and help me share the video share 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 let me see let me look for it also so i could share help me share the video share the video invite your friends inbox it to your friends share on your timeline hello Martinessa. god bless you good to see you and happy new year how is the new year going <laughs> i believe that this new year is going to be powerful this new year is going to be awesome i see i see i see more works coming from you know from great women like you i see i see a lot of virtues you know a lot of impacts you know you we are becoming a voice to our generation and I believe this year is going to be intensified. This year is going to be awesome and powerful. Welcome, welcome. As you come in, please help me share the video. Share, share, share. Invite your friends. So the, 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 the song that is playing is my song. <laughs> it's titled Mighty God. But it's not on YouTube yet. I will soon put it anyway. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God. She said, Happy New Year, it's going to be amazing. Amen. I see that. <laughs> I believe so. I, I believe so. You know, this year is going to be awesome. I see it. I see it happening. I see I see knowledge coming to people. I see I see people being informed. I see people on chains and people who are bound. I see ch ch shackles being broken wisdom and knowledge is coming to people and God is setting his children free my husband is here and he says hello sweetheart he looks awesome oh thank you my love <laughs> thank you too <laughs> oh so as you come in please help me share the video help me share the video and invite your friends knowledge is coming 2019 is going to be powerful Women are going to liberate it. Men are going to understand the value of women and why they should be treated with respect. Why they should be treated as, as hu humans with value, not with, uh, uh, treating women with brutality or treating them as though they are your slaves or they are your schoolgirl. You know, or, you know. So there is going to be there is going to be transformation. Knowledge is coming. I just pray that as this knowledge is di is being dished out to the society, people should grab it 
you know people should grab it and share with their uh, friends and their loved ones so that they can set them free because if a man and a woman is informed i don't think there will be need for violence i don't think there will be need for abuse everybody will be living in peace and joy and harmony and people will be enjoying you know their homes everybody will be fulfilling their purpose on earth the world will be a better place when knowledge comes light comes illumination comes you know impact begins to happen you know joy comes love comes peace comes happiness comes but when there is ignorance one person will be suffering and the other will probably not be suffering but he doesn't even know that he's ignorant of what he's doing he doesn't even know that the woman you're laying your hands on is made in the image and likeness of god it's like you it's like you hitting god if she is made in the image and likeness of god and you dare raise your hands on her it's like you hitting god right it's like you raise your hands against god so by the time you understand that your wife is made in the image and likeness of God and that she was born for a purpose, that she is a human, that she is a woman and she is a human and that God brought her to this earth not to be a slave, not to be spat on, not to be looked down on, not to be under bondage, not to be a, 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 a childbearing machine, not to be a, se a, a sex satisfier, not to, not to, you know, not to be a, a, a chef, a cleaner. All of those things put together, you will, you will enjoy your home. You will live in peace. Why? Because everybody understands who they are. You will no longer be forcing your, your wife to, you know, to do all the house chores in the house as though she, she's a slave. She's not a slave girl. The house is our house. It is your house. So if there's anything that needs to be fixed, we fix it. It is not you fix it. It's we. We fix it. Okay? It's, I, was, I was sharing a, a, a two days ago. Uh, when I did the first um, uh, dangers of um, bride price, I was saying that bride price have made women look as though they are properties that can be purchased and be owned by a man. So women think that I am taken means I have been bought. I am taken means I have been bought. A man thinks that Paying bride price or paying dowry means he has been able to acquire a property. I was saying two days ago that you don't have what it takes. You don't have what it takes to buy God's own, to buy God. Because it's as if you, you're saying that if you give that one millionaire, you have bought God. Because she is made in the image and likeness of God. And no amount of money can buy God. As much as no amount of money can buy God, it means no amount of money can buy any human. Be it a man or a woman. Be it a boy or a girl. No amount of money can, is, is, is what equating to God's own children. You can't buy anybody. You can't buy the air they breathe. You can't buy their, their, their body parts. You don't have what it takes. You don't have what it takes. So all of this, you know, abuse we are seeing today is born out of ignorance. It's born out of the fact that men and women do not even understand who they are. Men and women lack true understanding of who they are. So please help me share these videos and you can, you can, you can um, mention people's name on the video. Men, women, bring them, I, especially the men. I want them to come and understand, you know, the importance of what we're talking about today. You know, when, when um, two days ago when I was talking, I said that this movement should not just be a woman's movement. It should be a movement that everybody will embrace. Why? Reason because... One, the man is meant to go through a whole lot before he can be able to obtain a woman. So the price tag on a woman is becoming ex a, 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 um, exorbitant, is extorting that a man would have to go and, and almost steal before he can marry. 
So it is something that men should embrace and say no to. As much as the woman will say, I am not a property to be sold. I am not a slave. And even, you know, even these days, we, we, of course, we should, we, we should even say no to slavery, right? Then let alone a woman who is not a slave to anybody. And you came to marry her, so she should not be seen as a property to be purchased. As much as the man does not have to go rob a bank before he gets to marry a woman. He does not have to go and rob a bank before he gets to marry a woman. I, I understand the concept of the fact that a man needs to get a job, a man needs to be, to be okay before he gets to get another partner because if you cannot take care of yourself how can you take care of your partner right so he has to be financially okay before coming to marry a woman yes beautiful that is not what that's i'm not disputing that fact but the fact that some greedy old um 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 what what do they call them kingsmen and your fathers and your parents would have to extort your husband to be just so that he can he can call you his bride is uncalled for it is uncalled for and it has, it has turned our women into a punching box. Our women are now becoming a punching bag. Why? Because the man is thinking that I obtained this lady. I bought you. That's why when you go to Africa, you see when a man is hitting a woman, he tells her, I own you. I own you. Therefore, I will do to you what I choose to do to you. I will do to you whatever I choose to do to you. Why? Because I own you. Are you serious? And he goes up as far as saying, I bought you. I paid in full. Have you heard men say, I, didn't, I don't owe your parents. I paid in full. So because I paid in full, I can do to you whatever I want. Somebody is saying, does it always have to be that way? Like a man needs to be very okay before he gets married just need to be clear on this well i think the the reason why we 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 advocate for the man to be financially okay before you know he gets married is because of the unforeseen circumstances that might come through that marriage now for example if the woman gets pregnant and there is a, um emergency or there's an unforeseen circumstance. Let's say, for example, she slipped over and she she she's bleeding, and they get to the hospital. Is something that is too expensive if the man is not buoyant enough. Imagine if you are asked to pay a thousand dollars for an emergency operation and um, fixing of blood and all of those things. And if, where will he get the money from? Even if he sells the most valuable thing he has, he might not be able to acquire that. Now, and the, and the way the church system in Nigeria is to, is, um, is 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 functioning, they will not they will not even want to lend you such an amount of money, right? So. Most times we, 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 ad, we advise that men should be um, stable, financially stable before getting married because anything is possible. Anything is possible. You could be having a, ch you could be, you could be in the labor room and the child could not, you know, or the child is having difficulties coming out and they say, we can't do this without oppression. And before we have to do the operation, there can be every other complications that we need to save your life. So if the man does not have the money, it means you and the baby are in a, a situation of, of, die, of dying, right? So there are also reasons, there are also other reasons for him to be able to take care of you and take care of himself, all right? So that's why we, I would advise that a man should get something doing before he gets to marry, okay? So, so that's, my, that's my reason, but if... If not, most people say, oh, we, we want to build together. I understand the system of building together. And, and that system of let's build together, do you know what it has ended up making our, our females? Most times, even in Africa today, most of our women are now the one paying, paying the bride price. Oh, yeah. That is it. Some of them are not the one carrying the financial burden. Women are getting old and being sick. Why? Because the financial burden of the family is not levied on them. 
the man is not doing anything right okay she said really in nigeria the issue of bride price is really causing havoc in this country i mean like men now see it as i paid for you i owe you i owe you but then you need to see i can't see that complete um i can't see the co comment complete let me refresh here so i could see it so that is it man that is it men are thinking that they pay bright price or they pay a dowry that they own a woman hello my omonike thank you for joining god bless you thank you so much uh my uh, uh, um diamond ranty I, I i i i don't know if i saw that name properly uh thank you for joining um reverend rosaline ranty thank you for joining uh machi uh, for me thank you so much for joining god bless you alzan is saying if he is not very okay how will he take care of himself his wife and children he will have to pay the house rent and all that that is it so if it, it, uh, um so let, let me respond to what uh my uh, messi is saying that is it so the man thinks he owns the woman so that is why he can he can wake up anytime whether she's sick or not sick he wants sex whether she's sick or not sick he wants pandadiam he wants fufu he wants all of those things and the woman is saying i am sick I can't pound, I can't do all those things. And he doesn't care. He's like, woman, don't push me outside, though. Don't do this. Now, she is thinking, she, uh, she is asking herself, how can it be that I'm sick and still be able to be forced, and still and still be forced to cook, do tedious house chores, and have to give you sex? So it's like I'm your I'm your slave. I'm your slave, slave girl. I'm your slave girl because... There is no, no man in his right senses would want to put a woman who is under already pressure to go all through those kind of pain. She's in pain, you're putting her through pain. So it's, it's crazy. Women are not seen as properties. How dare you think you can own, you can buy a human being? How do you think you can buy, you can purchase another person? Even in the book of Genesis, when, G, when, when God was telling uh, um, man to take care of the garden and to, to dominate, he was not asking man to dominate Eve. He was not asking man to dominate another human. He was asking man to dominate the beds of the earth and the fishes in the, in, in the river. It was not dominate another. Eve was not to dominate uh, uh, Adam and Adam was not to dominate Eve because they were both made in the image and likeness of God. So the issue of bright price, I was saying two days ago that the culture of bright price started in the Bible, right? But though we have twisted it, just like we have African cultures have twisted the Bible today, we have twisted the issue of bright price. Now, when you look at the, the place in the Bible where, G, where, where the bread dowry was mentioned, it was not mentioned because a woman was supposed to get married on a normal basis without anything happening. It was mentioned because a woman was raped. A virgin girl was raped. And the penalty... For you to pay as a man who raped the virgin girl to the father of the virgin girl is to pay dowry. That was it all. Oh. And then I don't understand how Africans embrace, took that thing and made it a culture. Now, if you want to marry, you have to go through by, but that was not the concept of bright price. Now, even if you want to talk about the time of Abraham, when Isaac married Rebecca, now there was nothing... Rebecca's family never asked Isaac to pay anything. He only gave gifts to her. He only admired her. He was just happy that he found the love of his, his life, right? And he and Abraham, you know, agreed for Isaac to do that. It was not because Rebecca's family demanded Isaac, for Isaac to pay that thing. 
So, the, I don't understand where we got this whole thing from. If you watch the first video I did that I titled, Why I Think Bread Price Should Be Abolished. Now, I went as far as digging deep to showing you guys how expensive it has become. Three million, 50 live cows. I, I read it state by state in Nigeria. We have 36 states of Nigeria, right? I read it state by, I, I beg you to look for that video. I went on the internet and I, I researched for it because I want to tell people that it has become, it has become, uh, 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 you know, a burden. It has become a do or die thing. It's like if you don't, if you don't pay bride price, you don't get to marry. Now, my own advice when it comes to marriage is that when you, when you find someone who you who who you find peace with who you want to marry you know after you've done your prayers and everything and your spirit is settled to marry this person now the next thing is go to seek the blessings from her father god is all now if you want to host a party and say oh my friends i found the joy of my life i found the happiness of my my life i found the, my missing ribs my my missing rib brother Come and celebrate with me. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Oh, come, let's let's marry men. Oh, come, let's rejoice. I have found the lost, the, my my lost rib. I have found the love of my life. Beautiful. If you want to do that, beautiful. Organize a, a party. Get together. Do it if you have the money. And if you don't have the money, encourage the people who are coming to bring the, what they have. Let it be like a get together. You we exchange and we eat and we drink and we were happy. And everybody goes. So there is nothing like all the least that is in this world. Having to bring all the least that is on this earth just because you found a girl that you, you found peace with, and then for you to marry her, you have to go rob a bank. And because you, you were able to, to get to, to pay all those exorbitant amount of money, you begin to see her as a property. So when the woman wants to talk, you tell her, shut up. I own you. I want to read what my money care wrote here. She said, let me tell you my own uh, opinion about bride price. Even without a bride price, a man that is violent will always be violent regardless. That's true. Okay. That's true. She also said, I believe bread price is for the men to honor the parents of their, of, of their bride. It's only that some cultures had made it worse, especially in eastern part of Nigeria. I probably think I didn't see the remaining comment. And uh, my mercy is saying, I'm telling you, the Igbos are fond of this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, actually, we think that... You know, when I was going through this topic, eh, when I make the research, when I was making the research on internet, funny enough, the Igbos are not the most expensive. Aha! The Igbos were not the most expensive on my list. Uh -uh. I'm about opening the list for you right now. The Igbos were not the most expensive in that list. Let me tell you the most expensive. The most expensive are the Ethic, the Cross River. The Ethic were the most expensive according to statistics. According to statistics, the Ethic, the Ethic from Cross Rivers, they are the most expensive that you have to pay three million, three million naira with with uh, uh, fifty live cows. Or either you pay three million naira, or you you come with 50 live cows so do the maths so the evils are not even the most expensive but the way it's been carried in nigeria it looks as if though as though the evils are the most expensive now i am not cons i'm not even concerned about the amounts because whether it's one dollar or it's three million dollars the fact is that the woman is seen as being purchased the woman is being seen as being purchased. Like I said, if the man wants to um, wants to appreciate the family of the bride, like Isaac did with Rebecca, 
like uh, Ma Omonike is saying now, if the if the if the man wants to appreciate the the family of the girl, he can do it the, with what he has. He can give whatever he had. So and it must not be a demand from the father of the girl or the mother of the girl. It has to come from his heart. And it has to be that it's what he has that he will give. It's not, it's not a thing of you must do or else you are not seen as married. You are not seen as, um, you, we cannot give you our child. Because it is that same mentality that if you cannot give this, we cannot give you our child, makes it purchasable, makes it look like we purchased something, right? Because for a woman to feel free to speak in her home, for a woman to feel free to, to walk out of the relationship at all time, at any time, is because the bride price or whatsoever was not included. She, the man did not, the father did not collect bride price from, from her. So when the man is trying to intimidate her, she is saying, hello, you did not purchase me. You did not purchase me. And we are supposed to be living as partners, like partners, like friends and not like enemies. We're not supposed to be living as though I am your slave and you are my slave master. I know the civilized world have made it more easier that, uh, to say, oh, go to court and obtain a court certificate. Then you can walk out at any point now tell me how many women would want to walk out with the stigmas the, with the stigma uh, st stigmatization that is in nigeria that when you don't marry at your late 30s you are seen uh, like something is wrong with you so which woman would want to leave even with the abuse she would not want to leave right because she wants to retain the name married woman so even while the man is using her as a punching bag, she would rather prefer to remain under that abuse and be called a married woman than leave and be called a single mother. Because the, 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 the picture of the single mother is like she is the one that ruined her home. The, nobody, wants to see the, nobody wants to see any other reason. We want to see you as the one who is at fault. You understand? So if there is no bride price attached to a, a marriage, I would rather see it as a place of more freedom. I know that some men are very callous. Some men are very, are very wicked. Whether bride price or not, they will still bully their wives. But it's, it's more on the rise when they pay bride price. It's more on the rise when they pay bride price because there's this ego, there's this, there's this ego that comes in. They feel like I've purchased a material. I've, purchased, I've bought her. I own you. Have you heard scenarios where husband and wife got wedded today and they came home and all they get, all the woman gets is, woman, I want to eat pandan yam. I mean, you know how tedious African weddings used to be. The woman will have to dance all through, almost her, almost, you know, how long with her high heels or whatever. She gets tired and all that, all the greetings and hug, and she gets drained out. She's way, she's worn out, and you are telling her. That she will need to eat pounded yam. Before you say Jack, he begins to hit her right there. Why? I paid in full. I think that if we abolish bride price, now a man obtain a uh, knowledge on who a woman is and how she should be treated, it will better build a better uh, uh, a better home than when they obtain. Um, bright, uh, when they when when they are when they are being taxed to pay all of this amount of money, and you know they still obtain knowledge and say, oh, you have to treat her this way, you have to treat her that way. Now it takes a godly man, it takes a man who has the fear of God to pay all of those money and not subject his wife 
to slavery. It takes a man who has the fear of God, who will love like God, who would overlook whatever he paid and treat her as equal partner. But any man who does not have the fear of God and who does not see God's love as such that is for all, he will still do it with or without bright price. He would hit her. He would treat her bad. But it will be better without bright price because if that man is ignorant and he did not pay a dime, now the woman will have more voice. She will have a voice. Why? Because you did not pay. You did not you don't own her. She will have this self self esteem. She will have this pride and 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 and, and this um uh, confidence rather to say that you don't own me. You do not. You did not. You did not purchase me. Of course, you can't buy human. So it is the best. The high time. It is high time you see me as your friend, as your partner. Let's reason together. When we have different opinions, we, we, we allow each other to talk. And when we're done talking, we come to a conclusion. There is no need for fighting. There is no need for bullying. There's no need for intimidation. So I think Africa will be more, um, will, will be better with our bread price. It, women will feel more confident, more happier. They will feel more good if there is no bread price attached because some of the women actually wants to talk but be, when they remember how much the guy paid they can't talk i remembered when my mother was abused when my father was usually abusing my mother now for every time he hit her he tells her i paid in full go and ask your father if i'm owing him now these are his words go and ask your father if i'm owing him so such kind of mentalities, such kind of words only came out because he, he thought he purchased her. He thought he bought her. So he tells her, you, don't, you, are, not, you, go, you are not going anywhere. You go nowhere until I am done with this marriage. You are not going nowhere. And let me also tell you some of the reasons why most women will not leave their marriages is because the amount of money the man paid for the bride price the family cannot pay back <laughs> now for you to be able to return a bride or for you to for a bride to confi confidently leave a house and say oh i'm not doing again i'm out you you know you're crazy she would the family should get ready to return the bride price in most in some cultures in nigeria so if the family cannot return the bride price, you know what the father and the mother are telling the girl? You better stay home. You better stay home. We can We don't have money to pay. Home. We don't have prop. We don't. Um, we don't have uh, strength for that guy and his problem. So we don't have what it takes. So the money he paid, we are, we are done eating it. We've exhausted it all. We have eaten it. Even if we sell our land, we cannot pay him. Even if we sell this, we can't pay him. You better remain there. Try and manage. Everybody is managing in their own home. So you try and manage. So whether or not the parents are seeing the bruises, the pain, the suffering that this woman is going to their own child is going through. But because of the fact that they cannot return the bride price, they don't have the money to return the bride price. She has to stay. Only very few, conf uh, you know, um, confidently leave the marriage. Why? One, they ha they either have the money to pay back, or they have a cult. They know their rights, and they are ready to go all the way to the cult to get their freedom. Very few. How many of them are are, are elites of that nature that would want to go? And, did they even seek uh, seek for court wedding? You know, most times in Nigeria, they even discourage you from doing court wedding. Why? Because they tell you it's demonic. Some churches tell you that court wedding is demonic. Because they know that the woman can easily seek for her freedom. So they discourage you so that people don't, don't even bother doing it. So when you are married, you do the, you do your traditional wedding and your white wedding. 
whether or not you did not do white wedding, as long as you did the traditional and your marriage blessing, you are married and you are caged and you are born to the man forever, whether or not you are happy in the marriage. So nobody cares about your happiness. They only care about whether or not the marriage is, um, uh, is functional, right? So it is crazy. I, 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 don't, I don't agree. I don't agree with the brutality of, of, um, of um, bright price. Bright price have done more harm to us than good. I say again, only few men would want to pay bright price and still treat their partner as equal. It is very rare. It's on rare occasions. It is very rare. Only a man who has the fear of God and who has obtained knowledge would want to do that. So there are some cultures that we no longer need. Let's let's do away with it. It is not if we do away with it, we are not we will not be said to be worse than the than the civilized countries that are not paying bread price. There are civil, the civilized countries today, most of them don't pay bread. Who knows? Who, who remembers bread price? They don't pay bread price. And I still know that violence and abuse did not stop because bread price stopped. No, but the, the, but the fact that they can, they can leave their marriages when, when it's no longer working, when it has to be their life or not, is either you die in this marriage or you walk away with your life, then they have the freedom to walk away. Right? So, I am of the opinion that bride price should be abolished. It should be abolished. We have long suffered, you know, for, from bride price and its, and its issues. So, let me continue by telling you some of the dangers of bride price. From where we stopped uh, two days ago. Some of the dangers of bride price is the, excuse me, is the fact that men and women have become debtors because of bride price. They have become debtors. Do you know that people now go to borrow money just to obtain a bride? And these are men. They will go to borrow money, and this money is in millions. Most of them sell their properties, sell their lands, sell their cars, you know, borrow money from the bank, borrow money from friends, borrow money from colleagues, go borrow money from anywhere just to, you know, um, um, just to satisfy or, you know, uh, feel feel that they have they've been able to you know do the rights uh, the rights and the rituals of of the of the parent of the girl of the culture of the parent of the girl now when they are done doing all of those do you know who gets to pay at the end of the day the woman <laughs> jesus the woman begins to pay africa no if you if you if you live if you if you live in Nigeria or you have friends in Nigeria, please ask them. Let them go make research on bride price. You will see that most ladies who are very inquisitive to get married, most ladies who cannot wait to get married, some of them are now the one paying their own bride price. They are now the one paying their own bride price. But but you know how they do it? They give the man the money. And they help the man buy everything in the list, or most of the things in the list. And then they ask the guy, come with your people. Everything is done. Why? Because she wants to be married. Right? So with that, um, with all of that, they hastily go get married. And after a few months, before you say Jack, <laughs> the man begins to hit her. The man begins to, you know, treat her like a piece of shit. Why? Because she was the one who wanted the marriage more than the man. It was as if she married herself. Because the man 
has this idea that for you to be married, you have to go through um, the the least the the bride price stops right. But being that he did not pay, so he felt that she yeah, she was she she she's already a cheap cheap girl to have been able to pay. Then she's cheap. She wanted him by all means. She's desperate. So it means he can treat her the way he wants to. And she will keep begging for him to stay in the marriage. Why? Because she is the one who wants the marriage to, to, to be. Because she wants to be a miss. Missus. She wants to be a missus. She don't want to be a miss. She's tired. She wants to join the trade of the married. I remember when I wanted to get married. <laughs> if you don't know me, you should ask. I don't know. I think I'm the, I am the most stubborn person in my house. And I hate injustice. I hate injustice. And because I hate injustice, I love the truth. I love the truth. So when it was time for my wedding, <laughs> Oh my my my! I think I you will need to ask my people what happened. You know, my mother wanted me wanted me and my husband wanted my husband to fulfill the rights and uh, of traditions and cultures and all of those, right? <laughs> I said no. Now I didn't come on Facebook to start talking about bride price as at that time, even at the time when I saw. Elizabeth, I not talked about it. I even said, mm, no, don't, don't, there's no need. Why? Because I wasn't seeing, I wasn't seeing something. It was a problem to me, right? I didn't want it because I didn't want to be presented as one who was purchased or bought. I didn't want to be seen as a material or a property. So I said no to most of the things that they wanted us to do. I told them, we can only do what we can do. Every other thing we would not do. In fact, be, in fact, before I even got to know my husband, before I even got to know my husband, when we were growing up as children, I've always had the argument on bright pride with my mother and my father. I told them that, I, I will not have my husband, no matter how rich he is, I will not have him pay all of those exorbitant things I'm hearing people are paying. I'm hearing how expensive wedding is. I told them that it is, it is wickedness, that this is not supposed to be. Women are not for sale. Nobody can purchase us. I've always had arguments with my father and my mother, and they tag me, as a stubborn girl and I don't care but you know it, it it never occurred to me that one day I will be on Facebook advocating for abolishment of bride price right so but thanks to God when when it was my time I was able to stand the ground and thank God even as much as my husband wanted to do it they listened to us they listen to us, right? So it is important we all say no to bright price. So if they can listen to me, it means that if we as collective women with one voice will speak out, it can be abolished. It can be abolished. Men and women have become debtors all for the sake of bright price. They have become debtors. They become debtors now. People, people are looking for them all around, you know, having to tag them as uh, borrowers, having to seize their properties, take them to police station. You know, it, the men have gone through a lot because they borrowed money to, 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 uh, to marry a woman that they, <laughs> that they found and they loved. Somebody I love that I found, you want me to buy her. Do you know that most men who went through a lot just to obtain the person they love have turned around, have turned against their in-laws. They have they've so hated their in-laws 
that anything that had to do with their in-law, they detest it. They detest everything that had to do with them. Now, they did not even just stop at that. They went as far as making sure that the girl does not come in contact with her parents or anybody that she's related with. Because what? The man is saying to himself, you sold your girl to me. So she is my property. Now I decide who she relates with. Some parents can no longer find their girl's child. They can't, they can't find their children. They can't find their daughter. They don't know where the man has taken her to. They don't know if she's alive or dead. They don't know where she is. They can't communicate. They can't reach her. Why? Because they, 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 they sold her. The man is saying, you sold her to me. So you relax. I do what I want to do. Now they can't reach the man. They can't reach their daughter. The girl is gone. Some of our girls have been used for ritual purposes. Why? Because the man had to go pay through his nose to get the wife. So he had to use her to make, to make, do a ritual money. To get back his money in millions and double folds. And after all, when he gets money, he can marry as many as he wants. So our women has become slaves. Our women has become victims to ritual abuse. Our women and men have become debtors. All because of bright price. All because of bright price. Please help me share this video. Help me share this video and invite your friends. It is time we all stand up and speak up and say the truth. It's not affecting you now because you are in a comfortable home where your husband has an understanding of how a woman should be treated. That's why you think it's not a problem. Have you thought about the many? The many that are affected and the few that are not affected. Have you done your, have you done your research? Have you weighed it on the scale of preference? Have you checked? Have you done check and balance? Have you seen that people are in pain? We were in pain. Do you know how many years I was in pain for the sake of my own mother's marriage? How, do you know how many children are in pain? Do you know how many families are shattered? How many homes are children are wishing that their father never existed? Do you know how many homes that their children are poisoning their fathers and stabbing the man because they see how much pain their mother had to go through? Do you know how many homes the children are wishing that God kills their father for them? I was wishing like that. All for bread fries, my father thought he obtained a slave trade and a slave girl. That he could do anything he wants to do with her. And that is the mentality of the African man. The 99% of men of an African man, he feels that he obtained a woman. That is why a president, the president of a nation could say that the woman belongs to the kitchen. That that is where she belongs. Now if a president could say such a word, now how much, how much more the kind of abuse and violence, the kind of pain that women are going through in their homes. If you think you are enjoying in your home, if you think your husband is treating you right, he's buying you all the beautiful clothes, he's taking you around the world, how many women do you think have such an opportunity? How many women do you think have such freedom? You know, I forgot who said, who wrote, the, who read this quote that says, and I quote, that it's where, when, 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 when people, how did he even put it? When people refuse to speak, that is when uh, um, uh, um, evil, evil penetrates. Evil becomes the thing, the 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 um, abuse or, or, or evil becomes the norm when 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 no those who who think they know the truth cannot speak so when you and i are silent because we are we are having fun 
we are not considering any other people. We are just being selfish to the fact that our own marriages are working and we are having fun. Now, because good, good men, that's the right word, because when good men refuse to, to speak, then evil becomes, you know, the norm. When good men refuse to speak, evil becomes the norm. So, if you and I are the good people who understands that it's for real, it's a true fact that bright price have made men see women as properties and we are not speaking up, it means we are not different from the men who are abusing our women. We are not different because we are too selfish to think about another person. We are too selfish to, to want to bring solution, to want to bring freedom. We are too selfish to think that everybody is like ourselves. The percentage of men who abuse women, who see them as good for nothing, other than bearing children, other than satisfying their sexual um, urges and their libido, is because it is a, 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 a rather high, you know, than low. So if we, if we put it on a scale and we, we, we go on the street and we try to, and we do a, we take a statistics and we do a survey and see that most men are thinking that because they pay big or small amount of money to get a woman, they feel like they own this woman. So why can't we all speak up and say, let's do away with this. Why? Because it's causing harm to our women. As me, as I'm speaking right now, as I'm speaking right now, a woman is being beaten in Africa. A woman is being beaten around the world. A woman is being beaten as though she's a slave. A man is hitting a woman as, I, as I'm talking to you. A man is pouring her hot oil, hot water, spatting on her, hitting her. I remembered, oh my goodness, I remember how my father used to beat my mother. It is, it is, I, 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 you might not see it as anything because most probably you did not experience it. You, you came from a family where your father was so caring <laughs> and, you know, he respected your mother and they live in peace. If you came from such marriage, just such homes, you probably would not understand what the average child is going through. Do you know how many children are thinking of, of suicidal thought for their fathers? I bet you don't know. How many children are wishing their own fathers dead? The, the pain is too much. For you to behold the, 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 the brutality, for you to behold the abuse, is too much. Most women have become the financial pillars of their homes. Why? Because the fathers or their husbands do not care. Do not care about them and the children. So they are the ones who are now turning around to become, to become the, 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 uh, the father and the mother at the same time. Now the reason why we want to pull bright price is so that the man will also have value for the woman and so that he can he can take care of the woman and have the sense of value to take care of his children <laughs> how is that how is that working for her has it been working so after paying that bread price how is the marriage has it been working has the man been been really there for the family has he been doing what he's supposed to do as a father you know, so we need to weigh these things. We need to check it. It is not because you are asking him to pay bright price that will make him responsible. That is not true. That he, for the fact that he, he paid bright price, does not make him responsible. Responsibility is in knowledge. Is in knowledge. And that is why I would ask that people should, should rather be educated 
seek for the right knowledge and understand who a woman is, how they should take care of their home, how, how they can manage their home. They should seek for knowledge before they seek for woman, before they seek for, for home, before they seek for marriage. Because bride price have not proven that any marriage can work. There are men who did not pay bride price whose families are living happily today. DSA was telling us that he never paid bride price. Now the wife, Pastor Bosse, is living happily. Now, why is that possible? Because he first acquired knowledge before acquiring a woman. Before, before getting married, before getting a life partner, he first acquired knowledge. So it is knowledge that helps to build a better home. It is not whether the man paid bread price or not. Because bread price had even made the man think that this woman is a slave. So he can do to her whatever he pleases. But if he have knowledge, he will know that this woman is not a slave. She is a human. She is a woman. She is a human. And she, she needs to be treated with respect, with love, with care. The man will have the true knowledge and true understanding of who a man is. You know, men think that for you to be a man and be worthy to be called a man is the fact that you have pennies. You have pennies or you have money and pennies together. Then you are a man. That's why when, when young teenagers are growing up and they, they view the concept of who a man is in the African culture, they go about with this ego, with this pride that they, that they, they are a man because they have pennies. But that does not make that does not make you a man. Why? Because even dogs have pennies. Male dogs have pennies. Male cows have pennies. Male goats have pennies. So what makes you different? The difference is in your knowledge and your output of the knowledge. You do not become a father because you have the the, the privilege to own a child, to, to give birth to one. Being a father or being a true father, it's not because you got, you got your wife pregnant and you had a child. That's why you're a father. No. I can adopt a child without practically giving birth. I can adopt a child. It does not make me little of a mother. It does not. What makes me more of a father is the output of the knowledge of fatherhood that I, that I, that I, I understand. So whether it is to my own children, biologically or not biologically, I am a father and I am representing a true father. The caring, the defended, the, 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 the love, the, the father, the one that energizes and pushes you and helps you become the... the that person that God has created you to be. So it is not in whether or not your sperm was able to produce a child. So all of these things have to be dealt with. Abuse has become the, 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 the thing, the norm, and we are not talking about it. Most, most NGOs in Nigeria who, 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 are, who are fighting for the rights of the girl child, most of them have gone cold. You know why? Because... Money is involved. Why can't we push that laws should be made on behalf of the female, on behalf of the women in, the, in, the, in, in our parliaments? Why can't we see more women in our, in our parliament? Why can't we see more women in our political systems? Why can't we see more women in our, in, in our educational, agricultural, technological system? Why? Because the man thinks he's the Lord and he, can, he is the one who has the right to rule. Rulership was given to man and when the Bible mentioned man in the book of Genesis, he was talking to both sex. He was not talking to one person. So man has no right to subject the woman into suffering and slavery. You are not better than her and she is not better than you. <coughs> I 
I'm sorry about that. This place is very cold. Um, it's winter, so it's very cold, so I'm having cough. So it is high time men understand that the woman was not given to them by God for, 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 for abuse. For abuse, no. As much as you care and would love to nourish yourself, that is how you would love to, that is how you, you, you ought to do to the woman. To the woman. Do unto others what you want others to do unto you. If you want people to respect you, to love you, to honor you, to cherish you, do unto others. Lead as an example and let us follow. You don't ask people to give you respect when you don't even give them a return. It's not possible. You don't bring out hate and ask us to give you love. I know we are supposed to love everybody, but the human nature would want to give exactly what you give to them. It is only on rare occasions people give love in return after they get hate. When they get hate, they still give love. It's very rare. It's very rare. So my small run of blessed memory would say that woman, the woman is a multiplier. She multiplies anything you give to, you give to her. So if you want peace, she multiplies the peace. If you want joy, she multiplies the joy. If you want good marriage, she will do it. She will multiply it. So why shouldn't we do away with bright price? <coughs> Excuse me. Why shouldn't we do away with it? Now, bride price, another danger of bride price is the fact that bride price have led to forced marriages. When I mean forced, I mean F-O-R-C-E-D. Like you are being forced into a thing. The girl child have been forced into marriages all for the sake of what the father will get in return. Oh yes. Go to go to local villages in, in Nigeria today where you can hardly find a very good social amenities. Of course, we don't even have it in the federal level, right? <laughs> so it is even much more worse in the local level, right? So in villages where um, the girl child is not exposed to knowledge, the man is not also exposed to knowledge, some of these men, some of the, uh, these parents, give out their children for, uh, for marriage without even the girl getting to know about it. So she just, uh, you know, she just get to know that, oh, Nketi, your, tomorrow your husband, your husband and their people are coming home. So get ready, you are leaving the house just like that and the girl has dreams the child have dreams and she she's wishing for good education good infrastructures that she can you know manifest her passions that she can manifest her gifts and talent and become a blessing to the world but all that she gets is being forced into a marriage that she does not even know anything about the man. She does not even know anything about relationship. She does not even know anything about marriage. She's just being forced into the marriage. Why? Because a rich man is coming. Is coming to ask her hand in marriage. And the father had already prepared everything. So in Keti gets to follow the man and be married to him without understanding of how to keep a home how a, ma a woman uh, uh, should uh, behave the values of a woman the values of a man the how marriage is to be she does not have anything other than what she saw in her father's house she always know that mom, the, her mother is always the one cooking cleaning sweeping so she carries over that same values that she got from her own father's house down to her marriage where she becomes the slave she'll be the one to iron the whole clothes in the house she'll be the one to clean the whole house she'll be the one to clean she'll wash the whole she'll be the one to cook she'll be the one to clean she'll be the one to do all manner of things and Nkechi is is not just um emotionally dying because the marriage is not even 
at first what she wanted. Now, after all of that, she will have sex with the man. Emotionally, she's not prepared for sex. She will have to do it. Now, all of that thing, how do you think the children produced from the womb of Nketi will feel? Nketi will, 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 will give that same uh, anger, the same pain that is in her heart. She will exact, uh, you know, she will, she will display it in her children. The same violence. So there is something that is in the heart that nobody is listening to. So in order for her to, to, you know, give out that pain that is in her heart, she begins to hit her own children. She begins to maltreat her own children without even thinking twice because it's like everything is not working to her will. This is not what she wanted. So our girls have been forced into marriages some of them have been first even married occultists because these occultic men have money. They can buy our females, right? They can buy our children, right? So because they come to flash some money in the... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Because they have the money and what it takes to do what is on the list and even more, they can have our girls. They can have our girls. And after two years, you hear that Inkechi is late. She's dead. You know what happened? The man used her for rituals. And the family cannot do shit. At some point, the man does not even allow Inkechi's fa family to come and see, to see her cubs. He said, I've buried my wife. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because the man is so rich... In Kechi's parents are poor, they forget about it. Now, if in Kechi was sent to America, to Italy, to Germany, to any country as a sex, as a sex slave, the parents would not know. Whenever he they call, oh, how is our daughter? She's fine. She's doing well. She's in America, she's schooling. The man will be sending them gifts. We'll be sending them money. And they think their daughter is doing well. She is doing prostitution in the street of Italy. That, that is just, that is how bad these things have become. That is how bad it has become. Now, if, if that girl was of the age of, she, she was of the age of marriage, and... There was no bride price, eh? Believe me, she would be able to she would be able to leave that marriage at, at any time. She would know she would at first you can at first you cannot even restrict her from reaching her parents. So time to time she's talking with her parents, right? So time to time she's in conversation with her parents. Just in case anything is going wrong, she's off. So men would even be afraid to, one, use their wives for sex trading, to use them as for rituals, to, do, to molest them, to abuse them, and do a lot of things to them. Why? Because they did not purchase her as, at first. So knowledge is needed. Knowledge is needed to keep a home together. So it is not, my, it is not bright price that keeps a home how many celebrities today in Nigeria that are married and they are not together? So it is not because the husband that they married did not pay bread price. In fact, the man did not keep, he did more than the bread price. Some of these marriages were, 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 were done in Dubai, expensive places. They, they, did, they did wedding that were what, you know, pe people, celebrities came and all that. The guy showed off everything. Their wedding ring cost millions. They did extra vagant wedding. But did he keep the marriage? No, he didn't. The man paid bride price, right? Yeah, he did. But he, he couldn't keep the marriage. So it is not bride price that keeps marriage together. It is not bride price that determines whether or not marriages will work. 
So if it's not bread price that will do it, then why can't we why can't we abolish it still? Since it's causing pain for our women, why can't we abolish bread price? Why can't we abolish it? I'm sorry, somebody has been trying to call me and I'm and I'm putting off the call. <laughs> And I'm, I've been putting up the call. So we can actually do without it. We can do without it. So the another danger of um, bright, of bread price is the uh, is the fact that there is a high rate of immorality. There's an increase in immorality. There's an increase in child rape, teenagers rape adult rape you know because men uh our young men because of the situation of of the of african culture and african economic system and this man could cannot afford paying expensive bread fries and being able to satisfy their in-laws do you know what they do you know, they are adults, right? They, they must look for a way to satisfy their sexual urge. So any teenager or children that comes their way, they see them as a, as a medium or as a, um, uh, an object of abuse. If it means raping them, they will rape them. Some of them will go ahead and rape these girls because they don't have the money to pay for bread price. Yes, the money is so much. They have the, the, the economic system is too, is, you know, it's not giving them the platform to be able to work and obtain such kind of amount of money to, to be able to marry a girl child, right? So, to marry a woman that they want. Because the money is too much, so any little girl that comes their way or they see around the compound or any little teenager, they want to take advantage of that teenager because they want to satisfy their sexual urge. So our children become a victim of rape because some boys or some mature guys could not afford bright price to pay and have sex with their own partners. So we are also causing problem to our community, to our world, to our country. What is the rate of rape today? What is the rape of uh, uh, the rate of child uh, sexual abuse today? Do you know that also some of the causes are not demonic? Some of the causes are not demonic. Some of them are lack of bride price of the fact that this man could not raise bride price they could not afford to marry a girl because they say they don't have the money go to lagos and see how all of this you know all of these charlatans all of these bad yahoo yahoo boys who could not make up make money poverty everywhere how they are molesting and raping our girls how they are using and dumping our girls why? Because they tell you that their bride prices are expensive and they don't have what it takes. Now, apart from that, there's increasing disease and, uh, and child pregnancy. Early child pregnancy, diseases spreading all around because men would want to satisfy their sexual desires. And because they cannot afford to pay bride price, every other person who comes around them becomes vulnerable, becomes a, a victim. So it is very rare for a female child to come around them and they will not think about having sex with that child or having to molest the child. So before you know it, they impregnate our teenagers. They impregnate these girls and they are dumped. Some of these girls go to do abortion, they die. Some of them carry the pregnancy at the time of giving birth, the child and they themselves die. Disease is spreading all around. Why? Because men want to satisfy their sexual urge. They can, masturbation is not enough to satisfy their sexual urges. So because the, the economic system is too poor, the uh, economic system in Nigeria is too poor, there is no job. We have even become the, 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 the poorest country in the world. So 
every day it's it's getting worse these guys cannot even feed themselves and they are not getting old younger every minute counts in their year increment in their year right so it means a teenager of 16 today is becoming 17 tomorrow is becoming 18 next tomorrow like that as the day goes by as the year goes by these guys are adding in age and their sexual urges are not dying because they are getting older they are developing you know more urges to satisfy their sexual urge right so because you have to go and pay some exorbitant amount to get a girl they will look for anything to to satisfy themselves if they cannot masturbate to keep themselves in on in check so that they don't have to rape anybody's child so that they don't have to molest anybody's child then they will they, they, they will do it because they don't have the money to go and marry a girl but can you imagine a system where there is no bright price imagine a system where there is no bright price and a guy who is up to the age of marriage who does not have to pay all of this trash to get our girl imagine a system like that if the man would not go seek for God's blessings and seek for parental blessings and then with what he has he gives to the parent and say thank you for taking care of your child for of your girl child all right so wouldn't it be better like that than having to raise a society where laws the laws that are in the society are not helping the people living in the society the culture is not helping is rather degrading dehumanizing is rather causing more harm and abuse to us than good think about it think about a world think about a, a country without without bread price we will seek the face of god and seek the blessings of god and seek the blessings of the parents so that when the man ever tries to raise his hands on our girls because you did not buy them they were they are not your material they can easily pick their bags and walk out of the marriage why because you do not own their lives you don't own them you don't have a say so is either you treat them as friends as companion as equal partner or you forget the marriage you don't abuse them because you do not owe them you did not purchase them you don't have what it takes to buy a woman you don't have what it takes to own a woman you don't have what it takes to buy god's own so you don't don't ever see any woman as your property no matter how little or how big the money you paid it's not worth buying human life so it should be abolished that's what i'm talking about bright price have done too much harm to us let it be abolished and i was saying two days ago i was saying that this movement should not be just for the woman movement it should be for both the man and the woman why because it is the man who is being forced into having to pay all of those money to obtain a girl so it means if he does not have that money he cannot marry the love of his life if he does not have to go through all of those things he has no right to marry a girl that he loves right so the man should even support the movement and say no this movement is supposed to be for everybody for the lovers of truth we have to say no to bright price the dangers are too many we have counted the cost and we have seen that bright price is is it has become it has become too dangerous for us to you know close our eyes to it has really really become a thing to to really look into it's a something it's something to look into so i talked about the fear of being returned i think in the first video i talked about the fear of being returned that women uh, um you know women who whose 
uh, husbands pay exorbitant amount of money to obtain them. Most times when they want to leave the marriage, um, they can't they can't leave. And again, they are most women are enduring the violence and the abuse in their homes. Why? Because they are afraid that they might be returned. They don't want to be returned. They want to retain the name Mrs. They want to retain the fact that they are married. They want to answer the name Mr. Um, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Watts, Mrs. Jude, Mrs. John, Mrs. James, Mrs. What, Mrs. That, Mrs. Deborah, Mrs. Mrs. Blah, blah, blah. So they want to retain names. And that is why they undergo all forms of abuse and they don't even care. They, they are not ready to leave the marriage because they, they, they are afraid that leaving the marriage will cause more harm to them than good. So what a tragedy. What a shame. What a tragedy. So let me tell you another danger of bride price. Another danger of bride price is inferiority complex. And dehumanization. Inferiority. I think I've talked about dehumanization. Now let's talk about inferiority complex. Now since the man. Uh, this, uh, since men are meant to pay this all this money. To you know obtain a woman. Apart from the fact that he sees her as a property. He sees himself as a lord. And she is the servant. So when a woman you know, it's been obtained by her husband, you know, paid all, all of those traditional rights and all that. She begins to feel little of herself. She, she begins to feel less of herself. She, she, she begins to feel that the man is the Lord, that the man is the God. And so when the man is abusing them, they don't have, they don't have to argue. They don't have to say, I, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable or they don't have to disagree or they can't vo voice out why because they are already feeling li little they are already feeling low uh, you know less than the man they are already feeling less of a human that the man is the one that purchased them right so there's this inferiority complex that makes them not to be able to voice out when things are going wrong not to be able to say anything, you know, when they are, are being, uh, you know, they are being, you know, beaten and, you know, treated the way they don't want. If things are going wrong in their homes, they don't have a say. I remember several times in my father's house when my mother wanted to say things, when, when my father was doing some things that were not right, and my mother wanted to, you know, tell him that, it's not, I, I don't think what you're doing is right, right? When she wanted to question things, when she wanted to ask, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? This is not fair. I think you should do like this. I think you should do it like this. Oh my God. That day, she is going to get the beating of her life. Now, I hope one day I'll be able to put my story in a book whereby I, I, I will tell you in details what my mother actually went through the pain she actually went through now it got to a point where my own father was going to set her blaze he 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 poured her kerosene for those of us who know kerosene got it from you know gas he poured her kerosene and was ready to set her ablaze he was looking for lighter or matches a stick of matches to light on her body and to God be the glory, that was in the night. That was in the night. And he couldn't lay hold of the matches because when when they were when my mother tried to talk, tried to suggest a thing, and he went wild, he went, he got upset, he got angry. Oh my god, I didn't even know you guys were commenting all the while. I wow, a lot of comments, and I've missed it. I'm sorry, I'm going to read a few minutes. So when my mother wanted to say something that she felt was not right and, and she was trying to give a suggestion of what should happen because my father is feeling, having this superiority complex, thinking because he paid a dowry, he paid a bride price. So he thinks he owns he own her and she does not have a say, right? So 
they got into an argument you know human human you as uh, as the woman is trying to voice out she's in pain okay there were times where my mother gives birth um, and after a few days my father is nowhere to be found I mean this woman is in labor she gave birth you know when you give birth you are you 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 have to go undergo some treatment and all that for for a period of a few months before you get yourself together the man disappears so she will have to imagine a woman who is being stitched going through having to cook having to breastfeed the child all by herself and she's and anytime the man comes back she's trying to suggest to my father as much as your work is tedious as much as you want to and it wasn't like his work was all of this my father was working with total oil company he has a lot of money he has a lot of people working with him so the, there is no excuse for him to say that he cannot tell his boys to do what he was doing so he, he i'm sure he could he can do what he those boys can do what he was doing but because he has a lot of friends you know when you you have money you have friends you, you you they want to always take you out to go and groove with with single girls with girls all around and his his his, uh, his flocks of friends were people that were just unreasonable so his his clique of friends rather so you know my mother tried to suggest to him and you know how that she is not comfortable and all that ah he gets they get into few arguments he starts hitting and beating and he does not just hit with hands that is how painful it is he, my father does not just hit you with hands including his own children he hits you with materials anything he sees around he can hit you with the pots he can hit you with plates he can hit you with knife he can hit you with anything so when they got into this argument and it got intense he looked for, he he grabbed the, the 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 stove that was uh, close to close to him he grabbed the stove and used it to heat her and so the kerosene from the stove poured on her and he emptied it the more on her and started looking for a, a stick of matches to set her ablaze because his friends would always want to tell him that women you can always get woman at any time as long as you have money so women are not a problem if you have money you can always get women so that night when it goes that intense and my father was looking for matches we quickly had to i remember holding my father's trousers now i was a child but i remember holding my father's trousers i was holding and saying daddy no don't do this don't do this don't do this so my uh, my my elder sisters had to drag my mother to our neighbor's house and lock the door and and my my neighbors had to lock the door and so we were the one dragging my father backward he didn't stop there he he ran to that neighbor's house and was banging the door trying to pull the door so that he can set her ablaze for every time he hits her he says i own you i i paid in full i own you so it means his strong point is on the bride price, the fact that he paid, the fact that he is not owing. So that was his strong point. Now, this was not happening just in my family. I, 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 I saw it in some other families that were close to us. I saw it in some other families that were close to us and it was really, really painful. Okay, mm -hmm. I think I read this. <laughs> my husband is saying I must marry syndrome. I must marry syndrome. That's so true. That's so true, my love. I must marry syndrome have really left our ladies becoming I wish I never married syndrome. And my husband is also saying evil prevails when good men do nothing. That's true. Thank you so much, sir. Um, hello Elizabeth Give, thank you so much ma for watching. Hello Ma Ida Ramwafo, thank you for joining. Hello Ma Bosse, thank you for joining. God bless you. I'm seeing my Omonike is saying, I know it's because of the expense you have, you have, that experience you have, that is why you are particular about bride price. <laughs> like I said, even if a bride price is not paid, 
some men will still abuse their wife. I, I'm sh I, I understand what you're saying, uh, my Omonike, but the point, the thing is, I have the, I have, a, I'm the, of the opinion, like you said, even if bride price is not paid, some men will still abuse their wives. Yes, I agree. But the thing is, how have, how have, have we tried to weigh it and see how many men will still abuse their wives when they know they did not pay a dime? And how many men will abuse their wives with or without bride price? Um, with bride price, rather. I feel that what Africa is going through, what African women are going through today is the fact that apart from the fact that knowledge is is lacking knowledge is lacking bride price is the main reason because i had i had neighbors where i stayed i i remember so many men beating their wives it was the norm it was a normal thing they not only beat their wives they beat their children like dogs like 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 a, like a piece of trash so they always remember remind you that they paid so imagine trying to hit a woman and you did not pay. What would be your say? You understand? So I think that the, the abuse on women will reduce if the bride price is totally abolished. If bride price is totally abolished, abuse will reduce. Then we'll begin to impact knowledge. We'll begin to impact knowledge. And this knowledge now can keep the home so with or without bride price the uh, people can be happy in their homes why because knowledge has come but do you know i i, I thought i've told you i don't know if i've told you this story I, I don't know if i said it a few days ago i know of a man who is with um i don't know if he has master's degree but i know of a rich man who is well learned i mean this man is learned right but this woman has given birth close to eight children. Close to eight children. The man is learned. Yes, he has money. Eh? The woman has given birth to cl close to eight children. And do you know what? The woman is saying, I am tired of giving birth. For every time she says, I am tired of giving birth, she gets beaten. She, her husband beats her as in you need to see her face. The man is learned. So the man, educationally, he has certificates. No, that's what we call knowledge in, in Africa. So he is learned paper-wise, right? But he still, he still have this mentality that I paid, I paid for you, I own you, you are my property. I go to their house because, like I said, I make hairs. Like the one I'm carrying, I made this for myself. Now I make hairs, I make beads, I made a lot, I make a lot of things. So I am privileged to meet some of these rich people. I go to their house once in a while. I go either for their children's sake or for their sake. Either I make their hair, I make their children's hair, or I sell my beads to them or my, my, my materials to them. So I get to see what is happening in their own homes. I've seen a man, a rich man, beat his wife like close to 20, close to 10, 10 to 20 kilometer, as in he was beating and she was rolling on the floor and he was hitting and boxing and using his leg on this woman. Why? Because the woman is saying, I am tired of giving birth. The last one I did almost took my life. And it was not like she was lacking male or female. She had both male and female, but do you know what? The man said, I don't care. You have to keep giving birth until I tell you it's okay. Why? Because I own you. I own you. Go and ask your parents. I paid in full. So it's not, it's not just, it did not just happen in my own home. I saw it in other people's home. An African have embraced this mentality or this culture of the fact that they think they, they bought a woman the, the day they paid bride price. They thought, they think that now they own her. Now they can do to her whatever she, they, they want to do to her. Now see what, see what happened. This woman, one of, the, one of the women told me that 
gift. You know, there was there was a time she got to see my 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 husband, and she asked me that uh, that is that your fiance your fiance. Fiance. I told him yeah. I told her yes because I used to gist with her, and she used to tell me a lot of things that are happening in her home because. I get pained when I see women being beaten right from time when I was in Nigeria. I, I feel so much pain. I feel so much sad. I wonder why men will be abusing another human thinking that that woman does not have rights like them. So I used, I used to feel pain. I used to ask her, why, do, why does your husband treat you as though you are not human? You, you, are, you don't have what it takes to, you know, to, to say your will and stand on your will. I, he, he does not even respect you in the presence of, of, of a visitor. You know, this woman told me, said, she said to me, she said, gift. He said, be careful when you want to marry. Be very careful. That she does not know what, what how she got it wrong. But when she was marrying her husband, she thought she was marrying somebody who was learned because she was telling me that I thought I was marrying somebody who was learned because he went to school. And so I thought I, would, I was not going to face this kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, pain and abuse and violence. But here am I. And I asked her, you are a learned, you are a learned woman. Why can't you seek for divorce? Why can't you leave the marriage? She said, my children. Where do you want me to start from? My children. Now, for the sake of her children, she has to remain in the marriage. And believe me, this man does not have any iota of respect for her. He abuses her in the front of, in the presence of visitors. He treats her the way he wants. And he... He screams with his mouth and says, I, I own you. I own you. I, I, did, I paid in full. Oh, what a trash. You paid what? What did you pay that is to be equated to her life? Who the hell are you? You know, there was this man again. This one was in my church. He was so boastful and he was so proud. Of the fact that he cannot speak with a woman with a, a with an with an iota of respect, with any sign, any sign of respect, that when he wants to speak with a woman, he must speak at the top of his voice. He must scream so that she will know that he is the one that is in authority. So I used to have a problem with that man. I, I when 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 we <laughs> when we when we have um, church discussion and everybody is asking question and giving bringing contribution when i want to talk i talk with authority because i'm a human being so he always said to me gift i don't like the way you talk because you talk as though you are the man i say i am a human being i am exercising my my uh, authority as a human being and i'm giving my own suggestion so if you don't like my suggestion, you bring your own suggestion and let the whole house make, make their conclusion. So it's let let the issue not be between me and you. He always looked for a, a way to subdue women, not to talk. He always believed that women are not supposed to talk. They are the ones who are supposed to talk. And you know he was so proud to say that he does not assist his wife. When it comes to house chores, he does not assist her to do a thing. That the first and last time he assisted her was once since they got married. And this marriage is, has, has lasted for over 10 years. Was once he assisted her. And he was so proud of it. This man is so full of himself. I have never seen somebody who is so ignorant and so proud of, of, of being ignorant. So imagine the mentality. With all his certificate, he still could not factum the fact that a woman is a human being and should be treated with all, all manner of respect. She should be treated with respect as much as he himself wants respect. Maomanike is saying, what is, what is important is men should get knowledge before marriage. It's not the matter of bright price. I think the both should 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 not um should not be overlooked. I think the both should not be overlooked. 
Because if the man gets knowledge and still have to pay three, uh, three million to obtain a woman, at a point he will start thinking that he bought the woman. Even if he pays one dollar, there is this, there is this inner man that tells him I paid. Even if he paid one dollar, there's this inner man, inner mind that tells him I paid. I paid for you. I paid to get you. So, you know, it's, it's, and it's keep reminding the woman that you are a material that was purchased. You are a material that was purchased. Hello, Pastor Niran. Thank you so much for joining. Hello, Natalia Koma. Uh, that's my professor in school. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining. God bless you. Hello, Ma. Aderunke. Thank you for joining. Um, hello, Mafumi. Thank you once again for joining. Hello, Samavins. Thank you for joining. God bless you. So that is just that is just it. It is high time we do away with all this. Let's do away with bread price. We don't need it. The only thing a man and a woman needs is knowledge. We don't need bread price. If we abolish bread price and bring knowledge, I think we'll have a better home. If we remove bread price and bring knowledge to replace to replace bread price, we'll have a better home. The man will not need to go and be thinking of how to borrow money because he wants to do a, a wedding. You know, however we see it today, let's not also forget that women are uh, humans are competitive in nature. So the girl, the bride, will keep pushing the husband. That ah, my friend, my friend, uh, 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 um, uh, this, my friend, this, her wedding was this, my friend, this. So the it's she's giving the guy the impression that don't forget to after paying all of those in traditional marriage, we need to get an expensive gown, we need to get an expensive hall, expensive food variety. So it, on everything is on the guy. He has to pay through his nose, whether it's through bride price or, or it's through white wedding. You know, he has to pay all of those just to get, just to have to, you know, tell the society I am married to my bride. Come on. That is not needed. Imagine if three million is, a, is put in investment. If instead of paying three million, for bride price. Imagine if that three million is put in in an investment. After one year of that marriage, after two years of that marriage, how much return would they get from that three million? So we don't need it. Let's look for let's look for the rather their happiness. Let's give them knowledge and let them live in peace and harmony. That is more fulfilling than the woman having to live in pain because of bright price hello my vivian taylor thank you for joining please help me share this video share on your timeline help me inbox to friends share on groups and let knowledge be spread i want men to join this movement let them join this movement because they themselves have been pushed men have been pushed And some of them have become arm robbers, yahoo yahoo boys, all manner of things, just so that they can prove to in-laws that they are, they, are, they are capable enough of paying bright price. So, don't forget to share this video. I'm sure it's going to be a blessing to a lot of people out there. I know it's uh, uh, the culture of bright fries might not come immediately. Might not uh, um, come immediately. We might not be able to abolish it instantly because a lot of people will want to fight against bright fries. But I believe that 
a time is coming when if this generation does not fight against bride price the next generation might fight against it yeah i believe so because it has done more harm to our women even to our men even to our men even to our men our boys have become a lot of things that they were not meant for all because they, they saw a girl they wanted to marry and they have to go they have to go through due process to get married right and the due process is costing them almost their life so they have to go do anything they can do just to make money and the time they did it they say oh i'll do it once they they, they started selling cocaine they say oh i'll do it once before you know it became a thing of habit and at the end of the day they will become the women will become their punching box why punching bag why because they tell you it is your parents who pushed me into what i'm doing today it is your father it is your mother it is those your greedy in-laws it is those your greedy kinsmen who pushed me into what i am doing today so if you call me i'm robber you have to call them i'm robber because i wasn't an i'm robber before i was a good guy before but because of the fact that they have to extort me i have to go make money anyhow anywhere and you people do not care where the money is coming from so i have to do a man have to do what a man have to do so these people have really destroyed our women and our, our our men so no to bride price let it be abolished now 2019 i pray that we will not just talk but we will act if it means we getting somebody you know to stand with us and we'll push this vision forward to get somebody in the parliament in nigeria to you know pass this bill into law we will be grateful we will push it until it it works you know so thank you so much for everyone who have stayed all through to the end i'm so grateful god bless you and thank you everyone who have shared thank you everyone who have um, uh, commented those of you who are yet to share don't forget to hit the share button and just before I say goodbye, I would want to remind you of my book. I am a woman. I am a human by Topsy Gift. I am a woman. I am a human. So this book is on Amazon. This book is on Okada bookstores. You can get it as cheap as possible. All right. So get this book. I am a woman. I am a, I'm a human by Topsy Gift. Believe me, the the knowledge the information the the testimonies the values that are on these books <laughs> is something that not just women would, would love to read not just teenagers not just girls but men and boys we will build a generation where boys will be taught men and boys will be taught the values of a woman and the, the impact of, of, of what a woman can do in, to, to the society, the, 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 the impact that a woman can bring for, for her society, for her, for her, for her you know, community. You know, so a, a woman is a human and she, she has so much potentials. You will see examples from these books, women that change their world. You know, just like I'm speaking about Bright Price today, there were women in their time that they could not obtain education. Education was prohibited for the, for the girl child. It was prohibited for the girl child. But a woman fought and got her degree and became a medical doctor and she became a life-saving woman. She began to save lives in her community. See, we are all born with potentials. We have purpose. We have purpose to carry out on this earth. Let us not die empty. 2019, let us not die empty. Let us not live our life chasing shadows. Retrieve your steps and look at yourself and ask God, 
Why am I here on earth? Let others not be receiving reward in heaven. And God will ask you, well, what, 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 what did you do? What did you do with the, with, with the potentials that I gave you? Let us not be a castaway. Let us not, let us, let God not regret bringing us to earth, but let him rejoice while he's in heaven, seeing the good works that we are doing on earth and say, that is my daughter in whom, in whom I am well pleased. That is my son in whom I am well pleased. Okay. So get this book, get encouraged, get your teenagers, read this book, get your boys and girls, read this book. Let's change our society. Let's make impact. Let's bring joy to humanity. Let's bring light. We are the light of the world. So when, if, when we don't bring light, we will remain in darkness. We are complaining of violence and abuse today. It's because of darkness and it's because of ignorance. There is no human being who is full of knowledge that would prefer to abuse another human being. It is because ignorance is, is the talk of the day. Is, ignorance is the state of the day. Ignorance is the norm. That is why people are taking advantage of others. But when we fulfill our purposes on earth, when everybody is busy fulfilling purpose, who, who will be left to think of who to abuse? No, everybody will be busy. Everybody will be busy. Men and women will be busy bringing change and development to their world. Changing their world and transforming humanity and bringing joy to the heart and the face of God. Angels singing hallelujah, hosanna, because you are changing the world. Because you are a blessing to humanity. So let's not, you know, let's not uh, um, forget that we are here for a purpose. All right, so get this book on Amazon, get it on Okada Books, share knowledge. Let your boys, let your teenage boys read this book. Let your teenage girls read this book. Let your husband read this book. Yourself, you need to read this book. By the time everybody understands, you know, the, understand knowledge, understands, gets the information and gets it right, the home will be more of a joyful place. You will have a, a more fulfilled home than having a home void of, of, of knowledge, void of truths. So you are not helping your girl child or your male child when they grow up with the wrong value system or with the wrong perspective of who a man or a woman should be. A lot of women thought, think today that being a woman is just about getting married and having children or being a woman is just about having to clean up the kitchen and having to have sex for, for you know and and having to get married or having to bear children what a wrong mentality what a wrong mentality so it is high time we teach our children the truth light has come and many women have sacrificed their life to teach us to tell us the truth that we are here for a reason and if they can do it we can as well do it okay so the bible says, in the days of ignorance he will overlook but now knowledge has come truth has come light has come let us not deny our children of this truth show them the way and let them lead let them be an example let them bring let them bring joy to your to your heart let them be a blessing to, to your generation and generations to come, all right? So let's not, you know, deny our children this uh, 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 opportunity. I was glad when uh, my Ifoma, uh, Ifoma Anigoro told me that she bought the book. I was so glad. I was so glad. Now, <laughs> I was so happy, you know, and I was glad when I started hearing testimony from people. So people started telling me, oh, I'm reading the book. It's a party. Wow, wow, wow. I want to host you. I want to host you on my platform. This book is, is powerful. This book is worth talking about. <laughs> I bet you saw what DSA wrote about this book. <laughs> because I had to pour, I had to empty myself. I, I said, God, how do I reach out to people? I know that not everybody will watch live videos to to try to understand or comprehend what you're saying but the book book can go as far as you know uh, for those who love to read books can go as far as countries so i'm glad countries different people are buying the books and they're already giving testimonies 
I've asked them to give uh, put up reviews on Amazon, you know, and come on Facebook and share what they learned from the book and, you know, and teach people and share with people, you know, so that we can be happy living on earth so that this life will be a place that we can glorify God that we once existed, that we once lived in. All right. So thank you so much for every one of you who have uh, supported me all through. For those of you who have, um, you know, shared the videos, commented, liked it, loved it. I am so grateful for those who bought the books, those who are yet to buy. I am so grateful. But I believe that this book will change somebody's life. Buy it as a gift. Share to your friends. Let them read. If you see somebody who needs knowledge, if you see a man who is abusing his wife, buy the book, give them, let them read. See, by the time they, they discover knowledge, you don't need to come and preach to them. You don't need to come and tell you, ah, sir, it's wrong to abuse a woman. By the time they sit down and they read, they, 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 see, they see how wrong they become. They will begin to change. When you see women who are, who are misled, who are doing things that they are not supposed to do, buy knowledge, give it to them. Tell them, oh, I have something for you. Give it to them. And ask them time by time, how far, have you read the book? How far, how, have you, what did you get? What did you get? Where, where, where did you stop? How can I help you to you know, be better? How can I help you make it easier for you to read? How can I make it easier for you to comprehend? You understand so by before you know you don't know you are saving that family and that family could be smiling tomorrow all because of you they could go to their closet and say thank you jesus for this person i am grateful to god for this person now the world might not know the world might not know that you are already a blessing but god sees it god counts it god is seeing all all the impact that you are making all the, you know, you know, the help that you are giving to people, whether it's material help, financial help, knowledge help, God is seeing it and he's putting it in count. Okay. You are going to get your reward, whether it's on earth or in heaven. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for having you till the end of this video. I hope to come back tomorrow. Maybe we'll start another topic. And um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Topsy Gifts. I have a lot of songs and I have videos I've done on children, um, on men, women and all that. All right. So let's keep sharing the knowledge. Let's keep sharing information. Let's keep get, uh, making the world a better place for our children and children, children to come. Thank you so much, guys. I am so grateful that you remain with me to the end. God bless you and Happy New Year. Do have a lovely day. So, bye-bye.